Hello everyone. I promised that I would record and upload this video yesterday, microservice and database uh, part 2 video. But I'm sorry, I was not in the mood to record this yesterday. So I skipped it, but I'm going to do it today. So last time we discussed how you can create a record in the database, right? So without any uh, JDBC, without any uh, database related queries or anything, we learn how to create these records in the database. So, so now we are more going to move to one step further, that means little, little advanced topic, okay? So we are going to learn how you can create the databases and tables and everything uh, without even interacting with the database. I mean, a database means, let's say, if it's a MySQL, without going to MySQL Workbench or MySQL Command Prompt, how you can create and uh, manipulate all those tables from your project. So why this is important? Think something like this. So let's say you are going to develop some system, you are in a development stage, you want to give someone to try, right? So in that case, um, so that person may be benefited your data, play with your system, and when he go next time, he don't have a fresh system, right? So with this approach, you can uh, give him a fresh system every time. So what does it mean when you start your service, it will create all the tables for you, right? So table will be, the system will be, from the scratch every time database will flush and ready for the next time from the beginning so this is i mean there are multiple uh, ways multiple things you can do with this feature but the, that is the most common thing i i mean a benefit i'm always getting anyway so let's move into the project where we left uh, last time so if you check the database database don't have any record right now first let's see uh, one nice feature let's say change this to sample 2 and I'm going to start the service right so because since I don't have a sample 2 database so obviously this will break yeah that is that is expected right so because we don't have a database called sample 2 so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell here create database if not exist equal true right how it works so no failures let's go to database and let's try to refresh everything so now you can see you have a sample uh, database right sample to database right so but it doesn't have any table but you do have a sample to database so since we don't have uh, uh, any table let's see what we can do right now right so I'm going to add new property called JPA dot Hibernate uh, DDL auto, right? So what I'm going to do is first I'm going to put as a create, right? So I'll explain what this property does is, but let's see what happened. So now I'm going to execute my program again. And go back to my sample to database because that is my database right now. So now you do have a table, right? So you do have a student table. Right, so you can see the same columns exist, right? So this is the same, this is the table we used last video that you can see the same columns are exist, right? So that means when you use this, it will create data, uh, tables automatically. Let's see this one now. So I'm going to stop the service, right? So now I'm going to refresh sample uh, two again, right? So it remained, the table is remained, right? So even though you exit from the service, even though you terminate the service, table is still remain. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to change this to create drop, right? This is the nice feature. So now you run this, right? So you have the table, right? So now you're going to stop this. Service is stopped, right? So you go and uh, check here again, so now your table gone, right? So your table gone. So what happens is if you put the create drop mode, uh, it will create the tables when you use service start, it will drop the table when you uh, terminate or shut down your service, right? So this is the feature which I explained. You can uh, use this feature. So every time when you start your service, there are a few uh, fresh set of tables if you need, right? If you don't need that, if you need to preserve the data, you can go with the create mode. What the create mode means, it will create tables if not exist. 
And the problem with this mode, you need to be very careful. Even though table is remain, every time when you start the service, it will, uh, I mean, recreate the table, right? So the difference between create and create drop, if it's a create drop, so when you shut down the service, it will drop the table. If you do a create mode, you it won't uh, drop the table, the table will remain. But when you start the next time, it will recreate the table. That means you will lose you all data, right? So, um, I mean, we can try this. We can, uh, for example, if you want to um, try this like this. So now, so now I'm going to in a create mode, right? So I'm going to start this service. Okay. So when you go here, you will see a table, right? So I'm going to go to that table. I'm going to add the record manually. Right, so if you uh, select the record, now you have a record. Okay, so now I'm in a still create mode. I'm going to stop this service. Right, so still I do have access to the record and I'm going to start the service again. Right, so when I execute this now, I don't have a record. Right, so different between a create and a create drop, create drop, drop the table when the service shut down, but create won't drop the table when you sh uh, shut down the service, keep the data, but when you next time start the service, it will fresh, right? So there are multiple uh, other options, right? You can uh, search this, right? It's ideally, it's an update. So update is a really nice option because in that case, it won't delete the uh, records as well. So it will create the table if not exist and it will um, if you add something to your model it will add those columns but with little restrictions if you add not null field or something with little restrictions and uh, if it is update it will uh, when you run next time your records also will remain but if it's a create record will not remain record will delete and if it is a, a create drop table also will, will drop when you shut down the service anyway so just read a little more about it so you can try this so you can put a changes to update mode and you can add some field into your uh, model class and then execute the then start the service then you will see that new field is being created on in the table so uh, but the difference is like if you put a not null field as a new field then it will create little problem for you other than that everything will be okay so now let's see how we can find a record. So now we can create the record. So update is not much different. It's the same. So let's see how we can uh, find a record, right? So if you go back to our examples, student repository, so we uh, extend from the JPA repository. So you, we don't have any methods, right? So I'm going to uh, go to uh, student um, IMPL, right? So I'm going to implement new method, public, right so student so there's a little different here i'll explain that and fetch student by id right so i need id right so uh, with spring boot 2.0 and onward so they use optional uh, as a return from the fetch so uh, not that really Spring Boot or Spring Data JPA. So you know that optional is long story short. Optional is the way with introduced in Java 8 where you can uh, avoid the null point exceptions, right? So with the Java prior to Java 8, like Java 7 and Java 6, you had to check everything with the null. Let's say you have a, a class, class has a group, group has a unit, right? So before you access the unit, you need to take the class and say the class is not null take the group and if the group is not null take the unit some some null checks right so with the optional you don't have to do those things right so i'm not going to take the optional here so my point is so uh, now spring data jpa when you find something it return you optional right so what you can do is you can say student repository right dot find by id Right, so you can say find by ID int ID. Okay, so now we can return this. So now we, we can return this, but this will tell okay, here yeah, you need to uh, this is optional, right? 
so this is how it returned from uh, find by id so you can see it here right so now this is good so now i need to go to controller and uh, change the controller but here there's one thing to do right so now uh, sometime we may not have a student right so in that case it will return uh, just just null uh, as a response that is not good right so if we can't find any data so what you need to do is you need to say hey we don't find the record right so 404 not found right and also if uh, whether we have the record or not it depends on uh, it's, it's a business logic it's a logical thing right so whether you are trying to search the record so you get a record or not is something logic so I prefer to go with the uh, interface, uh, so my implementation for that service layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a student, student equal, uh, student is finding by my repository. So now what I'm going to do is if, right, student dot is present, right? So if, if we have a student record, so I'm going to change this to student again, return student.get, okay, else return now, okay. So I'm going to handle that in the service layer. It's okay, you can do this, you can handle this in a um, controller as well, but I prefer to handle this in a service layer because controller is supposed to uh, route the traffic and this is kind of a my my logical thing my business logic right so i'm going to take it here so now everything is from service layer is okay so i need to go back to here and i need to uh, add this to the controller so what i'm going to do is public uh, student fed student so this time i need to tell my i'm going to send the uh, request parameter to the id right so it's a int id right so here i'm going to do little different so rather than just uh, sending the student object uh, as a response but there are two cases right so sometime i don't have a student sometime i do have a student if i don't have a student the right practice is say hey not found i cannot find any student right so for that i need to change this to response entity right so in that case we can um, we can change the so in this case we can uh, change the response code otherwise the http status code so what i'm going to do is student student equal uh, student service dot fetch student by id and so int id sorry so i'm going to pass this id so if student if i get an if a student is null then I, I mean i don't have any student right so what i can do is response entity dot not found dot okay so now this way okay i don't have any student else that mean i do have a student so response entity dot okay dot body is my student object right so this can return and also this can return okay so i'm good so i need to put the request mapping here so request mapping so keep in mind again this is the same student right so this is the naming convention student last time we paused because we are creating a student so this time it's a get because uh, we are fetching the student right so it's always always you should go with the entity name otherwise the student that is my resource name right the so student is my resource so rest verb used to whether get to post whether you create to retrieve okay so i'm good and i reset my configuration back to sample database right so i'm good and i'm execute this right so meantime i go to my rest client so this is where we left last time okay so i'm going to let's say okay so i'm going to create one record Say ID is one and name is Krish. And so I create that record. So it is in the database now. And I'm going to create two. Okay. So 
so i have three records right maybe i have more because uh, uh it is database this previous database okay so yeah i have a few more records now so i'm going to fetch one so to the fetch i need to uh, change this to a get call and then i don't need this payload instead of that here i need to tell hey id equal uh, one right so fetch the id record equal one so now it will say hey krish so fetch the id two right so it fetched the second record now let's try to fetch something non-existing record let's say 50 right so when i fetch that you can see it changed it to 404 which is not found right so it doesn't have any body so this is the uh, simple way how you can um, insert record how you can create record and also how you can use some features to generate those database and tables automatically this is a small video and this kind of a continuation part from my last video so now um, just go ahead and subscribe if you like this video put the thumbs up and also uh, if you have an audience where you think this, this type of videos are interesting just share this video so then i'll see you in the next video uh, with the continuation of our journey microservices in and out with the practical examples till that stay safe take care